future presentation. Uh, you have the mobile payments. So obviously it's, it's great to be able to get paid as easily as possible. So you might have these uh, mobile payment tools that you can use in the phone or with this other card swiper, or if you have a more sophisticated type of system, uh, you can have the card swiper and that allows you to get paid faster possibly. Uh, send a payment link. So this is gonna be an option we saw about, we saw an, an option or an example where we send out an invoice. Maybe you don't want to send out an invoice. Maybe you just, because you don't want to track the accounts receivable, you expect them to pay you immediately, very quickly. Then instead of sending out the invoice, you might just say, I'll just send you a link, a payment link, which you might be familiar with. Like if you were to send out a payment link from some other platform or something like a, like a PayPal or something, and you're trying to get them to just pay you really quickly with a payment link. So you can send out the payment link and instead of an instead of a full invoice so you can make a link for payment and that'll be like a url they will automatically expire after customer pays you so the url for will be for a limited amount of time and will expire after they pay you so it's so it's just a one time type of link down and dirty quick link if you expect them to pay you soon that's usually when it's going to be useful if you're giving them a long period of time to pay you then you're going to want to give them just a normal invoice so to give customers more time to pay the full invoice uh, with online payment options would be best can send the link with email or possibly text the link so a cool thing about the link is that once you have the link you could send them an email with the link on it but maybe everybody's on their phone so you might be able to text a link more easily than you would be able to text like an invoice. So that might be an easier way to facilitate the payment. There's a down and dirty link. You just want to text and pay. We'll just send you a text to the link if that's what you want. So can you uh, can also make or code to scan? Uh, I'm sorry, a QR code. So you can make the link into a QR code if you're quite high tech or you're dealing with someone that's quite high tech that wants to scan and pay the link with their phone customer will go to a landing page where they can pay you so obviously what happens with the link uh, if you're familiar with any of these payment kind of options oftentimes you if they click on the link they're going to have to go to a secure landing page in essence where they will be provided the payment options which is one of the big benefits of the quickbooks online payments as we said giving and providing those different payment options the pay payment link will create a sales receipt so you might be thinking what is this going to do in quickbooks if i don't make an invoice well the link is basically means you're going to get paid at that point in time and therefore instead of having an invoice you're just going to enter the sales receipt the form typically used when you enter something like at a cash register situation as opposed to when you do the work first and then bill the client we might take a look at examples of these in future presentations so next we have the automating recurring sales receipts uh, so you might have a situation where you have like a subscription model for example and you're saying we're just going to build these people every month well in order to do that you you could make an you could try to schedule invoices to send out each month and try to do that but if you can get the agreement from the client for them to just simply pay you so you don't have to go through the invoicing and accounts receivable process, you can just set up an automatic payment. That would be great. So, so you might be able to, to automate a, a model for the automatic payments, which would be a great system for a, for a subscription-based system so you don't have to go through the billing process uh, every month so maybe able to connect to e-commerce like shopify now this probably isn't the first thing that that should kind of come to mind you would think when you're thinking about uh, the quickbooks payments but when you think about an e-commerce store and you're selling like inventory on a on another place at, at a store then typically what happens is you're going to have to have some kind of payment processor to get then the information into the QuickBooks. So if you have Shopify, you might have Shopify payments. They can help to facilitate different payment options like a credit card or you know a PayPal or whatever the payment options, or you might have a different one like a PayPal, which is another integrated option providing more options uh, to the customers to be able to pay you. So you may be able to integrate something like the QuickBooks payments in order to help that uh, process out as well. But 
usually with these e-commerce stores, uh, it's not really it's not really the the payments isn't the main thing that often kind of solves a lot of the problems. It's gonna be it's it's gonna be with trying to track the inventory that becomes an issue, as well as trying to pull in the sales data from the the Shopify store. So QuickBooks has other integrations actually within QuickBooks that you can do that to to try to integrate your e-commerce store like a Shopify or an Amazon or an eBay. And then you can pull in basically the sales data. When you're looking at the payment processor portals, then oftentimes your main goal might be just simply to have the least cost, you know, for for the, the for a portal that provides basically the most the most options uh, at the same time. So so you might want to do if you're thinking about integrating it into an e-commerce, you might want to make sure you do some comparing with that and try to make sure you're you're looking at what are the problems that you're trying to solve with the e-commerce and what are the costs of the different tools uh, within the e-commerce we have a whole nother course or section on e-commerce if you want to dive into that uh, more uh, so you can take a look at that so then let's look at some of the downsides of course <laughs> with the add-on feature is the fees now now uh, this is the fee structure currently on uh, the QuickBooks website. Things could, of course, change as time passes. You might talk to a pro advisor and get basically a different or or uh, uh, better fees, possibly. But the general idea, of course, is that you are providing the ease of payment to the customer, but there's typically going to be a cost. Uh, with the different kinds of payment options that they that they might be selecting. So note this in practice, then you might be saying it depends on the kind of business as to how you're going to try to be facilitating payments from customers. If you have a lot of repeat customers, then you, you might try to do your best to come up with a system where they pay you in a way where the fees are lowest so that you you're benefiting best between your transactions and the third party isn't benefiting. In other words, if I do a lot of business with a particular customer, then I might say, hey, look, I, it would be easier for me. I'm not going to get hit with charges if you pay me with if we have the same bank, maybe an electronic transfer would would have a lesser of a fee than some other kind of ways. Or maybe if they use PayPal and you use PayPal or something, it might maybe you have uh, lesser fees or possibly even a check would be lesser would you know be lesser fees in some cases possibly however if you're dealing with new clients and or you have a lot of different clients which, where you don't have a lot of repeat transactions but you have a lot of one-off transactions and your goal is is to try try to influence or or get your sales pitch in front of as many clients as possible